The theme for the Market Make ETH Global Hackathon is the future of finance. And when I was studying to become an actuarial fellow in financial applications, there was this problem that really annoyed me. The diversification illusion. So we assembled the team and created a decentralized application called EtherTree that securitizes lapse risk and addresses the diversification illusion. Now, a large part of finance is about managing risk and return. And generally, in order to get more return, one must take on more risk. So if we have a blue asset with low risk and a low return, and an orange asset with a high risk and a high return, and we look to capital asset pricing models, we see that a combination of assets isn't given by this linear relationship. No, a combination of assets can give the same return for a lower risk. Now, this reduction in risk depends on the correlation strength. High correlation gives a small benefit, whereas low correlation gives a big benefit. Now, when the market is stable, we see that different asset classes have low correlations with each other. And this gives us the belief that we have reduced our total risk. But correlation isn't constant. We can use Archimedean copulas to model its fluctuations, and we see that when the markets crash, the correlation between these assets increases, thus total risk increases, and our portfolio is undefended when it is most vulnerable. Okay, think of it like this. The diversification illusion is like having a bunch of bodyguards that then run away as soon as danger occurs. Now, if you want to know more about capital asset pricing models and the Archimedean copulas, I do have a few other videos on my YouTube channel that goes into the mathematics of it. But essentially, this is our problem, the diversification illusion. Now, let's talk about the solution. The blockchain allows for new asset classes to be created as it facilitates securitization. And we have the technology in the form of Ethereum. Now, all we need is a risk that is negatively correlated with traditional assets. So we want something that will go up when the market goes down. And we found it, lapse risk. Lapse is when someone breaks their promise to make a series of payments or when they surrender their financial obligation. So we have the technology and we have the negatively correlated risk. All we have to do now is combine the two to create a new asset class. Now we know that capital asset pricing models, correlation, copulas are not the easiest of things to understand. And so we decided to gamify our new asset class so that it has a better user experience. And our game is called EtherTree. Now there are two types of players, planters and waterers. The planters, they determine the parameters and the risk characteristics of the lapse security. In terms of the game, they're planting the seed for the ether tree. The waterers, on the other hand, they browse the various securities and pick one that they believe is fair. So in terms of the game, they're choosing which seeds to water. Now the game has got four parts. Part one is planting the seed. And this is where the planter gets to determine the parameters. And the parameters are duration, payment frequency, payment amount, number of waters, start date, planter's fee, bounty, and lapse limit. We'll explain what planter's fee, bounty, and lapse limit mean in just a minute, but essentially what will happen in part two, when it comes to germinating the seed, the waters will choose a seed to water. And we're gonna see that they're gonna prefer a high bounty, a low planter fee, and a high lapse limit and the rest of the parameters will depend on their own personal preferences. In part three, this is when it comes to watering the tree. Now the waterers need to make a series of payments to the ether tree contract. If a waterer misses just one payment though, then it's game over for that waterer. However, the rest do get to continue and they get to reach part four, which is harvesting the fruit. Now, the planter gets either the total fund, and this is if all the water is lapsed during the duration, or they get their bounty back plus their fee, and this is if the lapse limit is breached, or they just get their fee if the lapse limit isn't breached. 
The waterers, they get either nothing if they lapsed, a share of the bounty plus a share of the total funds after fees if the lapse limit isn't breached, or they get a share of the total funds after fees if the lapse limit is breached. So let's maybe talk a little bit more about this lapse limit bounty and planter's fees. So let's start off with the bounty. The planter deposits a significant sum of ether at the start of the contract. And this is kind of to lure the waterers in. If the lapse limit is breached, the bounty returns to the planters. If the lapse limit isn't breached, the bounty is shared amongst the waterers. So the higher the bounty, the more desirable it is for the waterers, but the more that the planter could potentially lose. When it comes to the lapse limit, I guess the best way to explain this is through an example. So let's say that the planter sets the lapse limit to be 10%. Then if more than 10% of waterers lapse, then the limit is breached and the bounty returns to the planter. If less than 10% of the waterers lapse, then the limit isn't breached and the bounty is shared amongst the waterers who didn't lapse. And planter's fee, this is the percentage of the total fund that the planter receives at the end of the contract, although they have to just give it up front, and because it's the blockchain, we have transparency. And the idea here is that if the planter sets it too high, you will scare the waterers away. Let's maybe go through an example to aid our understanding. So in part one, planting the seed, this is where our planter determines the parameters. And this is probably the most important part of the game for them. So let's say they set the duration to be one week and the payment frequency to be daily, and the payment amount to be one ETH and the number of waters required to be 100. Let's say the start date is the 15th of December and the planter's fee is 5% and the bounty that they're putting up up front is 10 ETH and the lapse limit is 10%. So let's say they set this up, then let's see what is the best, worst and normal case scenario for the planter. So the best case scenario for the planter would be if all waterers make all payments except for the last one. Why? Because this means the total funds go to the planter. This means they get their bounty of 10 back plus all 100 of them making six payments of one Ether each means you're going to get 610 Ether plus any return from a liquidity pool. Uh, but we'll talk about that in another video. So essentially, you're putting in 10 and you got out 610 over a duration of just one week, which is pretty good. But that's the best case scenario. A normal case scenario would be something where 10 waterers lapse, let's say, right at the start, and 90 waterers don't lapse, thus the lapse limit isn't breached. This means that the fee times the total fund is going to be the 90 uh, payments times 7, because all the payments are made, times the fee of 5%, of and we're going to get 31.5 Ether plus any return from a liquidity pool. Here, you're putting in 10 and you're getting 31.5 out still not bad but what about the worst case scenario okay worst case scenario is let's say 99 waters lapse right at the start but you have that one water that doesn't lapse this means you're just going to get five percent of seven ether plus your bounty back so you put in 10 and you got 10.35 out and with gas prices that's probably not a very good investment but like I said, this is based on the parameters that we are using in this example. And this is what makes the game really fun and I guess complicated is that different sets of parameters are gonna give completely different return distributions. But let's look at the water with the same example. Worst case scenario is that you make every single payment except for the last one. And that means you put in six, but you get nothing out. The best case scenario is when you make all the payments and everyone makes all the payments but the last one. Because this means the total fund is now 601 Ether. And when the planter takes their 5% fee, what we see is that you put in 7 ETH and you got out 570. Now that is the best case scenario probably not going to happen. So let's look at a more normal case scenario. And this could be something where 90 waterers make all the payments. 
and 10 waterers laps after payment number four. So now our total fund will be 90 times seven plus 10 times four plus the 10 bounty and we get 680. Now, once again, the planter takes their fee and we divide it by the remaining waters, which is 90. And we see that we put in seven and we got 7.18 out. Now, what we can see is that probably the parameters here were way too much in the planter's favor. Although, having said that, this is still a 2.6% return after a week. And if you had annualized this, it gets to like 275% for the year. But again, these things depend very much on the parameters and what actually happens. And what makes this game difficult to determine what your returns are actually going to be is because how many lapses and when they occur are unknown at the start. Now for the waterers, this is a simple game. You pick a tree to water, you don't forget to water it, and you get a share of the fruits low risk, low return, but you're still getting exposure to lapse risk. And it's kind of interesting because the more people that lapse, the bigger your share of the total fruit, although the total fruit will be a bit smaller. So it's not going to be a linear relationship between the amount of people that are lapsing and the amount that you're getting back. Now for the planters, it's a little bit more of a complicated game because you need to optimize the parameters for the tree. If you're too greedy, no one is gonna play. If you're too generous, you might make quite a big loss. So it is high risk, high return. But once again, you do have exposure to lapse, li lapse risk. And generally, the more lapses, the more return. However, you still need some payments to be made. So there's no point in making a bunch of fake water accounts that immediately lapse because then there's going to be nothing in the total fund. So overall, what we can see is that the expected return on lapse risk is unknown. But, and this is important, lapse risk has a negative correlation to traditional assets. Think about it, when markets crash, there's a liquidity squeeze, people tend to need cash, so they tend to lapse on their financial products. Thus, introducing exposure to lapse risk gives your portfolio a real diversification benefit, making it more robust and lowering your total risk. Okay, think of it like this with regards to the capital asset pricing model. Introducing lapse risk make, gives you the purple curve instead of the brown curve. So we are lowering total risk in a portfolio of assets. Now look, in this video, we're just giving an introduction to EtherTree. In another video, we'll go through some of the code as well as some of the non-fungible tokens that you can also earn by playing the game. Now there is still a lot more for the DeFi community to do in order to revolutionize finance. But we believe that EtherTree, by using the blockchain to securitize negatively correlated risks to achieve real diversification in portfolio construction, is a step in the right direction. Thanks so much for watching, and yeah, make sure to, to find out more about the project going to the following social handles.